Hey guys, what's up? Caleb Downing here, and today we have the Griffin Armament Checkmate HD, their 22 suppressor. Let's get into it. All right, so disclosures and all that stuff out of the way. Griffin Armament did send me this Checkmate HD for purposes of review and making content and all that kind of stuff on the channel. Now, I will say, as I've said every other time, and you're probably sick and tired of hearing it, but whenever people send me stuff, especially things like this, I feel like it alleviates me from a justification of buying it, right? Like I need to defend a purchase of why I had to buy it because I didn't put any money into it, all right? Also, since this is already mine, I don't, I don't have to send it back or anything. It doesn't matter what I say about it. It's already mine. If, it, if I end up not liking it, then it's not like they're going to take it back away from me. So I can say whatever I want to say freely without any consequence as far as all this goes they may never send me something again if if i try to trash them or something but we're not going to try to trash companies that's not what we're here to do we're here to try to provide you the most informative fun information that we can about these suppressors all right so that's our disclosures and everything got that out of the way let's jump ahead and go into some specs and then we'll talk about what comes in the box here all right so specs are pretty straightforward we have an outside diameter of 1.07 inches an overall length of 5.04 inches, very specific there. We have a weight of 5.8 ounces. Material is 7075 T6 aluminum and 17.4 stainless baffles. The attachment system is their Easy Lock and or Cam Lock, and you can get an additional, you can get a half a 28 direct thread. Uh, the finish is PVD and Type 3 hard coat anodized. Some other features that they want you to know, this does utilize, and we kind of already mentioned it, the Easy Lock QD mounting interface and adapter, uh, which is included. That is how they prefer you to utilize this system. It does offer a unique patent pending carbon guard, which they say offers an unbeatable user maintenance experience. We'll check that out. We kind of already mentioned before, it has a premium 17.4 H900 heat treated stainless steel core or baffles and 7075 t6 aluminum outer tube has the patented ecoflow baffle system for reducing back pressure and optimal sound performance they utilize a pvd and hard coat anodized finish which increases the surface hardness as well as corrosion and wear resistance and like all the griffin armament suppressors this is warranted for life with griffin's perpetual lifetime warranty all right, on the website, they have a listing, an area for caliber rating and for barrel length restriction. They don't say anything under that about what the barrel length restriction is. They don't mention any inches or lengths or anything. So I'm assuming, which is kind of dangerous, but they don't say it. So I'm assuming that for 22, there is no barrel length restriction. I'm just assuming that. They do mention specifically though for 5.7 by 28, it is rated for that, but they say that after you shoot 21 rounds, you should let the suppressor cool to ambient te temperature, which tells me that this is not a high volume or high usage, hard usage 5.7 can, right? If you can use it recreationally, like most people would on a 5.7, uh, but it's specifically for, for 22 long rifle, basically, or 22 Magnum, which we're gonna test all those out. We're gonna use them all um, on different barrel lengths and stuff. So that is the basic information that I can get off the website for you guys. Hopefully it answers some of your stuff. And if you need more specific stuff, feel free to go scour their website or go contact them, right? Their website is uh, griffinarmament.com. It's pretty simple, straightforward. You can find it very easily. Just look for that big Griffin thing and you'll, you, won't, you won't miss it. All right, so that's specs. That's disclosures, all that stuff. Last thing before we hit the range is we need to talk about what comes in the box, which is what comes in the box right here. So you get your box itself, obviously. You get your little... Uh, little baggy, right? You could end up using this for tools and stuff, which this doesn't come with any tools because it's pretty much a toolless design, which is kind of cool. They, they, they say that, that it's toolless design. Uh, there's one thing on there I'm a little questionable if it's a toolless design, but we'll see. Uh, but it does come with this bag. I think all the suppressors do. Instead of a big fold-out pamphlet kind of a booklet for your instructions, comes this little QR code, right? It's just a little business card looking thing with your QR code. It's very simple. I kind of like this. Most anybody nowadays that buys stuff, most anybody nowadays has a phone or a way to scan this and they can go, just go look it up. So anyway, that's their warranty card. Comes with a bunch of stickers. Stickers are cool. Stickers are fun. Um, this little warning card to tell you to make sure, for sure, for sure, that whenever you mount up a suppressor, whether it be their suppressor really or anybody else's, this is just good information to know. Make sure the can is aligned with the bore of the barrel. One easy way to do that 
Um, this isn't offered by anybody. Uh, this is not offered by them. I, they, I think they do have their own alignment rods, but get some alignment rods. If you get into the NFA game very much and you utilize suppressors and things, you want to protect those investments the best you can, and having alignment rods and the calibers that you're going to have suppressors, like 22 or 9mm, 45, you know, 30 cal, get some, keep them straight, keep them safe, don't you know, lay them around in a box where they get bent, because once they get bent, they're not worth anything anymore. These are very, very handy. They can save you from blasting your can to pieces on a misaligned mount. That'd be bad. Um, so they, they have a little card that kind of helps you distinguish whether or not you know your can's aligned or not. But look at that if you need to. Um, it also comes with these little O-rings. We'll talk about those in just a second. It's kind of nice that they offer some of these. They also have them on their website if these end up wearing out, but they offer a couple of these. And then you get the can itself with the Easy Lock, which is their preferred method of attachment, right? Which leads us right directly into how this thing is intended to be used, right? So since this does come directly with, or not directly, this does come provided with an Easy Lock attachment, um, let me explain this real quick. Uh, let's back up just a little bit. Griffin Armament, a while back ago, they came out with a cam lock, which is very similar to this. It's kind of a hybrid between a, a taper mount, um, direct thread and QD and tri lug. It's just a combination of a bunch of stuff and it's really cool. I really got into it. I put it on pretty much all of my pistol host suppressors and my pistol suppressors and I really like it. There's a catch to it that if you don't mount the suppressors properly with the cam lock, they can come loose or they can come off, which is not a good thing. After the cam or the yeah, after the cam lock came out, make sure I say them right, the easy lock came out, which is basically just a taper mount right with some coarse threads so i have one mounted here on a uh, end of a barrel so this is a this is a easy lock right mounted on the end of a barrel and basically it just takes a few rotations and then the suppressor's on and since it's a taper lock system you don't have to go ham haw and really tighten this thing down just get it nice and snug and you should be good to go and since it's nice since it's a taper lock i don't remember the exact numbers and stuff but it's easier to put on than it is to get off so if you put it on with a little bit of force, it's going to take a little bit more force to get it back off, if that makes sense. It also really helps to keep everything aligned, right? Since it has that taper on there, it kind of self-aligns. Now, if your threads are off on your barrel, well, then you're kind of out of luck. So make sure your threads are concentric, right, with the bore. That's kind of what the little card is for. Um, so that's the easy lock, and that's how this guy comes. You can, uh, apparently, utilize the cam lock, like I mentioned before, you just buy a different adapter here on the back and use cam locks if you wanted to use those. They are a little bit faster, um, and for 22s, I don't think you'd have a problem with them really coming off, but I would I would just say stick with the easy lock. You also, if you want to forego all that stuff, you can either one of two things. You can buy their direct half a 28 mount, or if you wanted to, since it comes with everything you need to go ahead and start using it on a half a 28 host, you can just take your easy lock thread it in and thread it in and tighten it down kind of tight and just utilize this guy straight up as a half a 28 direct thread. So there you go. That's three and a half, maybe four ways you could just utilize this guy, um, which is kind of nice that you're not, I mean, it gives you options. It gives you options. I like to have options as long as it's not too complicated and these really aren't that complicated. I think it helps. It helps. They don't lock you into having to use more of these systems and buying more of these easy locks because you can just use this as a direct thread if you wanted to. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's the mount. That's how this guy works. Um, some of the other stuff that they talked about is the easy flow or not easy flow, the, the what do they call it? Eco flow. They have an eco flow baffle system and they call it a tubeless or not tubeless. They call it a toolless takedown. However, if you have this guy tightened down a whole lot, which I just did during the making of this video, of this review, um, and I had shot this guy a whole bunch. I don't remember how many rounds I've shot through this, but I've shot, you know, a brick or so of ammo through it, and I haven't taken it apart since then. It was pretty tight on there, and I had tightened it down a lot when I put it on. So if this guy does get seized up on you, you can just use you one of you uh, Chinese, you fit them all, um, tools right to basically grab hold of the bottom here and then use a quarter something something flat whatever that sticks in the top in this sphincter looking um section on top those are cutouts so that you can put a tool down in here and then you can unscrew it so both the top and the bottom should unscrew so if we unscrew one of these get all that stuff out of the way if we unscrew one of these here's your front cap you can see that maybe you can see that really that's pretty dirty and you can see one of those little 
orange gaskets, right? It comes with extras, remember? It comes with that extra gasket. So there's your gasket. On the bottom here, we'll unscrew this. Now that, the, now that the tension is all off, because it had a lot of tension on there, we'll unscrew this whole thing. There's your tube, very lightweight. That's your aluminum tube. This is your baffle stack. Now, traditionally, if I showed you this baffle stack, just like this, you would probably say that's a very clean can. I mean, you could just about lick it, and I'm not going to, because I don't want to do that. Um, but this is very, very clean. However, if you take this guy off, probably should be wearing gloves, well, we'll bust one off. Look how dirty that is on the inside there. This is a used can. This is cool. This is actually really cool. For those guys out there that have used Rimfire cans, you know you got to clean your cans because Rimfire is excessively dirty. Exposed lead all over the place. Again, I probably should be wearing gloves. Um, but that is filthy, filthy dirty. However, the outside... I say however too much, don't I? Sorry, I'm going to try to stop doing that. The baffles themselves they seal with that eco flow and that patented sealing design when it's all sealed up it is sealed up the outside of that tube is super clean so once you bust loose your front cap and your rear your mount that just slides in and out easy i'm sorry guys that jokes out the wazoo but it just it works right this doesn't get carbon locked up in there to where you got to beat the uh the baffles out of the tube you guys have a dirty mind. Um, anyway, you don't have to do all that. It's very, very simple, very straightforward, very clean, very easy to get this stuff out. Goodness, gravy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's how dirty this guy is. So we'll get that guy out. Get one of these other ones out, and I'll show you. There we go. See how nasty that is? The buildup around there, the buildup of that carbon and crap, it's pretty nasty. Probably should get in here and clean this. But that just goes to show you that after... I don't know, we fired, I don't know, 400, 500 rounds of 22 through this. Nasty, nasty stuff, yeah. So we'll get this guy put back together. It's pretty straightforward. They do have, make sure I do get these clipped in there right though. Um, they do have these guys numbered. They don't want you to get these out of, out of line and they make it very simple for you to where you have it numbered and you have an index line. So as long as you have everything indexed and locked into place, then you should be good to go. Put it back. Screw everything back in, and what I'll do is I'll take the front cap and go ahead and get him all the way nice and secure, something like that. I'll hold the end so it doesn't rotate on me, and then I'll thread in the back here, and that'll basically snug up and tighten up everything on the inside there. All right, so there you go. That's basically, that's your disassembly and reassembly for you for maintenance and cleaning and everything, but that is super nice that this keeps the can, the... The area between the baffles and the tube, very, very clean. I, that's just it blows my mind, yeah. And now that we took it apart, now a bunch of junk will come out of there. All right, so there you go. That's some interesting specs, features, and the assembly, disassembly of this guy. It's very straightforward. They say it's toolless, but it is nice to have some kind of a tool or a quarter um, or a crescent wrench or something to grab a hold of here um, and keep it all, especially when you get it really, really tight because you can end up getting this thing really tight um, like I already did. Um, but it is pretty straightforward, right? You don't, if you, if you utilize it right, keep it lubed, then you probably shouldn't have to use tools. All right, so that's enough of me talking and stuff. Let's go ahead to the range. We're going to shoot this on a multiple, uh, multiple sets of hosts as far as pistols, rifles, and then we got some different calibers, 5.7, 22 mag, and 22. Shoot them, we'll come back here, and we'll give our wrap-up thoughts.
All right, guys, we're back at the shop. I've reshot this a couple different times, and I'm just gonna say it this way, and if it comes out the right way, I hope it does, and I hope I do justice to what I'm about to say, all right? Most 22 suppressors, as you saw in the video, all right, it suppressed very well. In my opinion, for a 22 suppressor, it suppressed very well, all right? What I'm gonna say is that most 22 suppressors are going to sound very close to the same. They, they are. If you put a decibel reader on it, you're gonna see different numbers and stuff depending on what ammo you use, depending on what gun you use, all the things combined. If you mix it all up and all the different cans and all the different hosts, they're gonna sound very similar, okay? And really the length and diameter of most of these cans are also going to be negligibly the same. I mean, some will be a little bit longer, one, one will be a quarter of an ounce lighter or heavier or whatever, but, I mean, they're going to be very close to the same length and diameter and sound reduction. So it, it, it makes you start questioning and asking yourself, why would you get one can over the other can, All right? The Checkmate HD has two things, in my opinion, that stand out that I really like, All right? One is those sealed baffles that it has. It makes it very clean, very easy to take apart and clean because you do need to clean 22 suppressors. The other one is the mount, the easy lock, the integrated easy lock mount. I like that. I really like that. With the with the with the baffles the way they are. I mean, we've shot. What have we shot? I didn't. I don't keep uh, round counts. I probably should if I was trying to be more scientifical about things. Um, I don't keep track of actually how many rounds I shoot, but I can tell you it's been hundreds of rounds during the review portion that you guys saw. That wasn't really that many rounds shot, but before that, I, I, kind of after the the individual firearms that I shot at the very end there, I showed you, you just a little montage thing of me shooting the pistol. Um, and that, look how clean those are. Anyway, I'm not, I'm trying not to get sidetracked. That was when I was testing some other stuff and I was using this can before I shot the actual review, kind of getting some time with it. And I don't remember how many hundreds of rounds, is that at least 300 rounds or so that we've shot through this thing, which isn't that many really. But 300 rounds of 22, dirty, nasty, crappy 22, shooting it wet, which makes it exponentially worse. The fact that we haven't cleaned this guy, we shot those hundreds of rounds, and then we went and shot this review and played around with it and had some fun. This is the baffles. Like, if you were to look at this, you would probably think this is a new baffle stack. Or, I mean, a cleaned up, you know, lightly used baffle stack. You break this thing apart... Get it. Yeah. Look, that is not a clean baffle stack. These things are dirty. These things are full of crud. Surely shooting the 5.7 and probably even the 22 mag, but definitely the 5.7, that probably really helped to clean some of the gunk out. You know, kind of, kind of blast some of the pipes clear, as it were. These things are clean. These things are definitely, definitely cleaner than if you were to get some of the other competitor cans that I have. Get the, get them out and uh, and try to clean them, which you do need to clean them and stuff, like I said. But this just makes it a whole lot easier to take everything apart. I mean, you don't have to stick dowel rods down in there and bust out stuff and potentially damage um, the baffles. Like, you don't want to do that. Um, talking again about the mount itself, the easy lock, it's very similar to uh, the cam lock that I've utilized on many of my other uh, pistol suppressors. Pretty much all my pistol cans, they use the, the cam lock. I really kind of want to switch to Easy Lock because I feel like Easy Lock is just a little bit more robust and way less likely to come off because I have had the Cam Lock come off sometimes. But the Easy Lock, I think, is a much more secure, dummy proof system. All right, but it comes integrated and, and I mean, it's integral to the, the, the system. We already talked about that. Um, so for the people that maybe don't want to do that, this is how this guy comes, and he comes with the muzzle device. So worst case scenario, if you didn't like the mount, you could Loctite rock set, don't do it, but you could rock set Loctite the easy lock into the can, right? So that it basically turns it into a direct thread, or what I would recommend, they do make a, a half by 28 direct thread that you just pull this portion here out and replace it with a half by 28. If you really wanted just a direct thread no QD, you know, none of that stuff, no frills, no fuss, you could do that. But the fact that it comes ready for easy lock with the easy lock mount, I think helps this guy stand apart. So the mount stands apart um, and then those sealed baffles really sound stand apart. The fact that they all sound very close to the same, I mean, that just is what it is. That's the industry, that's what we live in. I mean, how, how quiet can you get a 22 when it really, especially on the bolt gun, it sounds like you're just 
dropping a firing pin. Like, there's a little bit of extra noise going on, but, dude, shooting subs out of a bolt action, it is nuts quiet. That is, that's silly, funny, stupid quiet. Like, that's what I want to use for stinking squirrels and, you know, mice running around. Like, that's going to do some work and nobody's going to hear anything, All right? So anyway, guys, that's what I think about this can. That's where I think it's strengths. I don't really see any major weaknesses to this can, um, except maybe potentially, I mean, if we're trying to be really fair, I believe it has a relatively tight fire schedule on the 5.7. They don't want you to, like, I mean, it's not full auto rated for 5.7. I think you'd mess it up. I think I can only think of maybe one other can that I have that would be Full auto rated for 5.7. I don't even know if it is or not. It's just a very robust can. It is heavier and all that other stuff too. It doesn't have the sealed baffles that this guy has either. Um, but maybe if you got a can primarily for 5.7 and you were a heavy shooter, right? Like maybe you wanted to stick this on like a P90 or something and go to town on it. Maybe the fire schedule would be too heavy and you could potentially mess something up. I don't know exactly what you would mess up. But that's the only thing I could possibly think of. I and mean, if, if you're getting this for a dedicated 5.7 can, well, there's probably better other options out there for it. This is a 22 can that doubles as a 5.7 can. So really, even that con is just, it's not that big a deal. So anyway, guys, what do you think? What do you think about the Checkmate HD? I think it's cool, obviously. I keep rambling on about it. I'm going to shut up. Um, but what do you guys think? Do you guys have one? Um, I think they had older versions of these. Did they, do you guys have any of these older versions or their other 22 cans? Um, the Easy Lock, what do you think about that? Do you think that that is a good thing to come with a QD system on your 22 can? Or do you think it should just all standard across the board be half 28? What do you think? I'd love to hear back from you guys. That's it. Hope you found this interesting and helpful, um, at least enjoyable to some degree. Um, and thank you, uh, Griffin Armour, for sending this thing out. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, I want to thank my Patreons. You guys know who you are. You're awesome. Um, you get early content release and stuff. So if you guys want that early content release stuff, go over there, check it out on Patreon. We got all the links and stuff and all the stuff that YouTubers are supposed to say here at the end of the video. Go look in the description if you want to look at the other stuff that we might have to offer. And that's it. I'm going to shut up. Y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you watching and subscribing and everything. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.